Hi everybody, it's John Lourdes from DiscoverSkills.com and today I'd like to talk a little bit about a, a program that I really enjoy using even though I'm, uh, I'm not a big Apple guy and that is the Apple iTunes Player. Now, let me tell you just a little bit about the Apple iTunes Player. Basically, it's not just a player. What it really is, is both a, an organizer, a music or media organizer. It is a player program because it will play your media, but it also is what uh, folks that have iPads, iPods, or iPhones use to synchronize their media with their particular devices. And, and the fourth thing it'll do is it'll actually allow you to go up to the Apple Store and purchase uh, media and apps and all kinds of other things. So I'd like to take a look at it today just to give you a really quick brief overview so you have a good feel for what it's like. Now, I wanted to mention too that uh, you do not have to have an iDevice to use iTunes. In fact, I used iTunes for really quite a few years before I even had my first iPhone or iPad. Um, it's one of the best music organizer, media player organizers uh, that I think you can get for the PC. And so I was using it even before. I got one of those iDevices. But of course, if you do have an iDevice, it's almost an essential thing for you to have on your computer. So let's take a look, uh, first of all, at how do you get it. Well, as you might guess, you have to go up to Apple to get the iTunes player. And I'm just going to go up here to the uh, web, web browser address bar, and I'm going to type in www.itunes.com. And what will happen is it will redirect me actually to uh, a portion of Apple that uh, deals with iTunes. You can see that in the screen here. And of course they let you read about it and find out, a lot of, uh, you know, find out about it and all that kind of stuff. But what we're interested in doing right now is actually just going right here and downloading it. So if we click on download, it takes us to the next screen where right up at the top here it detects that I actually have a PC and you can see here that it's going to allow me to download the version for Windows. If you had a Mac you would see um, you would see the version for the Mac up here. A um, couple things you can do if you want to if you leave these two boxes check marked here uh, basically and then and then fill in your address here they will uh, Apple will put you on their mailing list and send you information about iTunes and other Apple types of things whenever whenever uh, information comes out. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those today. I'm already on Apple's mailing list, so I don't need that right now. And basically what you have to do then is you just come over here and you click Download Now. It comes up with the Save As window. Every time you download, that's, uh, that's what happens. And then you basically can save this download to your desktop. So I'll click on my desktop here, then click Save. And then what it will proceed to do, and I'm using Google Chrome here so you can actually see the download in the corner uh, happening. But basically what will happen is it will download to your desktop. And then the next thing you'll want to do is uh, double click on that downloaded file and then step through the installation screens. Now, I'm not going to do that here. I'm, I'm going to kind of assume that maybe you've installed some software before and it's really no different than doing that. What we're going to do next is just start up the software and just kind of take a, take a quick look at it. Okay, now I have started up the iTunes software, and you can see in the screen here that up at the very top, across the top, we have first of all player controls on the left here, and then if we go across the screen over here, we've actually got some view controls, some viewing controls, and then we've also got a search box here. But the probably the first important thing that you should take a look at is over here on the left hand side. This is sort of a, a navigation bar, you might call it. But what it allows you to do is to go to the different parts of the iTunes program. Probably some of the most important parts of the program are right up here at the top in this area we call the library. Now what iTunes does, it divides your media into different types according to the different parts of the library it has up here. For example then, all your music will go into the music library, your movies into the movie, movie library, your TV shows into this library, and so on and so forth. So it automatically will look at the type of file, the type of media file, and put it into the appropriate uh, library right here on the side. And then all you have to do is go click onto those different library parts, and it takes you to the different tracks or different media uh, files you have in that library. Okay? Now, Let's go ahead and, and stay up here on the music library. 
If we go back up to the upper right hand side of the screen we've got the view buttons and the first button that's clicked right now is basically just a list view and that's what we're looking at and that's what we were looking at when we started the program here. The list view is kind of nice in that it just gives you um, a sorted list that shows you line after line of all the different music tracks you have. Now, I'm actually using a copy of iTunes on one of my secondary computers. It doesn't have my full library here, but on my main computer, if you look at the bottom here, on my main computer, I have about oh, 10,000 songs or so, and all 10,000 of those tracks would be showing up right now in this list. Now, when you're in list view, the nice thing is you can click on column headings, like I clicked on name, and you can actually sort according to any one of these column headings. So if I click on name, I've sorted them by name. If I click on artist, I can actually sort by artist, which, which you can see here kind of organize the, organizes them by artist. Like here's all the John Tesh music all together. Okay. I can sort them by album, which again just puts all the album tracks together as I scroll up and down. I can do it by genre, which simply means, you know, is it classical, jazz, rock, pop, or whatever it might be. Okay, and then they've got some other columns depending upon the kinds of things you do. They've got rating and plays and so on and so forth. But, you know, a lot of times you're going to find those columns are not filled in for the music you have. But certainly for these columns here, this is a great way to quickly um, uh, organize your music so that you can you can kind of sort down through it and take a look at it. Now as you're looking at this music list and really you can do this from anywhere if I come over to a particular track and if I double click on it it will actually start playing that track. Now I don't have the music turned on so you can hear it in this video recording but you can see up here at the top that you can see these little bars here, this gra graphic equalizer is actually working right now. So you can see that the track is playing. And in fact, if I, if I come over here to the left side of this little graphic e equalizer viewing area, you can see that I can click this little button right here and it'll change to a progress bar. And actually show me what, what track is playing. Click it again and it goes back to the graphic equalizer. Now, as a song is playing, and this could just as easily be a video that's playing right here, and there would be a video window open, this progress bar shows you how much time is left. And in addition, you can go over to the left-hand side, and you can use these player controls to either stop or pause. And that's what I did right there. Or I can click to start it up again. I can fast forward through the music if I hold down. Or I can fast forward back this way if I hold down on my mouse. And then I've also got a volume control that I can use here. So these are the, are the core player controls that are here. Now, the other thing is, is that over in the view buttons, you can click any of these view buttons to change to different kinds of view. This particular button right here um, shows items by album. And then we've got large icon albums where I can actually go in and play a whole album if I just click on the icon here. Okay, You can see the little button appear when I mouse over to play the album. And then I've got a view here that actually is, and let's see, what do they call it officially? They show it the uh, cover flow. That's right. It's called the cover flow. And you can see here that if I drag this little bar... It actually takes me from album cover to album cover. Now, some of these that don't have actual artwork here are probably songs that um, that don't have the album information filled in correctly for, and so it doesn't even it doesn't know where to pull the album art from. But you can see as I go through here that some of these do. And at any point, if I want to go to an album, I just click on it, and then that shows me the album. Okay. So those are kind of different ways that you can that you can uh, view your music or view your video, or your tracks, and you know. And again, I'm in the music part of the library, but if I clicked on movies, it's the same kind of thing. You can see here your movies are listed different ways as I click the view buttons. Same thing for TV shows. If you happen to have any TV shows, for podcasts, for your device apps, if you happen to have any device apps, okay. And I'm going to kind of ignore radio. Radio is actually where you can um, you, you can actually go up and you can uh, uh, listen to internet radio stations right through iTunes. I don't use that feature very much myself. It's something you certainly can do. There are other players that do that really well though too. And so I tend to use uh, players like 
iHeartRadio and and uh, in in tune radio and those kinds of things versus iTunes for that. But certainly you can use it if you want to. Now, one other thing I was going to mention to you here is in the upper right hand corner we have a search box. And the cool thing about the search box is if you click on the search box and then start typing in um, the either the title of a song or an artist or or really any of the words that appear in this main information that you see in the screen here now like if I type in carpenters you can see that as I type in C-A-R-P it automatically filters everything else out that does not have those letters and shows me my results here so even if you have a very large library this is a very quick way for you to jump to a particular song that you might want to hear uh, or work with. Now, um, one of the core things I really want to show you here is over on the left hand side, if we if we go down the screen, you're going to see that we have these things called playlists. And the cool thing about playlists is um, what you basically do is you populate them with the songs that interest you and then uh, you can use your computer as a music player you can click on that particular playlist and it will only play the songs in that playlist and so you know you could you could put together for example uh, your favorite Christmas songs and come Christmas time or in the Christmas season you could you could simply click on that playlist start playing the songs in it and it'll only play that the songs in that playlist so it's really kinda cool that way um, what's really great for people that have i devices iPods, iPads, and iPhones, is that if you create playlists, you can synchronize your music according to playlist, which really makes it easy in getting just what you want over to your device and back again. So um, it's really great having these playlists here. Now, there's a couple different kinds of playlists. First of all, the ones that you see there right now are are actually called smart playlists, and they're they're called smart playlists because they actually automatically put tracks into the playlist without you doing anything. And if I come to this one, for example, called 70s Music, and if I right click and then go to Edit Smart Playlist, you can see here that what it brings up is a window that has basically filters in it. Filters that say, okay, choose songs where the year is in the range of 1970 to 79, uh, choose any media kind or choose a media kind that is music or a media kind that is music video and in fact we could even add more conditions to this I click the little plus button down here here's another condition we could say something like the artist and look at all the different conditions we can choose from okay but I'll choose artist contains and then I could simply put C A R P if I could spell carpenters okay and what will happen is the only songs that will populate here are the songs from the carpenters in this time period so this is what a smart playlist does and it automatically populates um, uh, the playlist for you and I'm gonna cancel out of here but the kind of playlist that probably you're gonna find yourself playing even more often is going to be the ones you create yourself if I go up to the file menu and I slide down to new playlist you can see that it creates an empty playlist here and I'm gonna go ahead and type in a name let's say it's the carpenters again okay so I type in a name so now if I come down and click on it it's empty you can see there's no songs in it but what I can do is go back to my music library and then I can search for the carpenters up here again here we go now what I can basically do to populate this library is simply click drag and drop the music right into it okay so now if I go down here and take a look at this you can see that there's the songs we've got them inside of our playlist and so basically what you can do is you can create as many different playlists as you as you want with as many different songs and then what you once you've got the playlist created it's just a matter of clicking on it come up and clicking on the song and the playlist will start playing and it will actually play through every song in your playlist. In fact, if you go up here to the controls menu, you can see that there's a controls menu at the top. Down the menu is a shuffle and a repeat. And if you choose shuffle, you can actually shuffle the music inside of a playlist, meaning that it won't play it quite in order. It'll just jump around and randomly play different songs. So you've got a lot of different things you can do here in terms of um, you know, creating your playlist, playing your music, playing your media. And even though I'm talking about music primarily here again, the same thing is true for movies, TV shows, or every other kind of media, media type you have here.
Now, since we're already up to about 15 minutes here uh, in this video recording, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and we're going to make this part one. And then what we're going to do in the next part when we talk about iTunes is we're going to take a look at a couple different ways to actually import or get your music into iTunes. And that includes going up and taking a look at the iTunes store, uh, ripping a CD, and uh, also just importing media that you might already have. So, uh, John Lorsch from DiscoverSkills.com, and I'll see you in part two of the video.